Hi, this is what was purchased to hold the compost in. It's chicken wire, and its height is 36 inches already, which is exactly what we want. And we want to cut the appropriate length so that the diameter is 36 inches. And that will produce the perfect size compost container. I will be using chicken wire to maintain my compost. For that, I will need to cut out the right amount of chicken wire. I want my diameter to be 36 inches long, which is 3 feet, and my height to be 36 inches long as well. The height is the easy part. To be able to cut the right amount of chicken wire, I need to follow this formula. 2 pi r. I will multiply pi 3.1416 around that times 2 times 18. I know my radius is 18 inches because half of the diameter equals radius. My answer is perimeter equals about 113 inches and that's how much I will cut. Compost is the once living thing turned into a soil conditioner, weed preventer, fertilizer. Compost works by adding specific materials like browns and greens, which we'll talk about in a second. And you'll mix it together to get millions of microbes to help break this down and to make something that plants need. So, as you can see here, we've got chicken wire. It's a really cheap way, but this just shows you you don't need fancy bins or anything to be able to get compost working. And with this chicken wire, I made, I made sure that it's three feet wide and three feet tall and three feet deep, which is the perfect amount of compost. Now, chicken wire is also good because it gives enough air circulation. And if there was no air circulation, or like if you put it in a trash can, it would work, but it would start to smell and attract animals, and you don't really want that. Now, what we've got here are, there's sticks, dry leaves, and like pretty much anything that's brown. These are brown materials, which are filled with carbon. And in the fall, if you rake up all those leaves, that's great to start compost with. But you also need green materials, as in grass clippings are a great material. We'll use grass clippings in here. It's full of nitrogen, which is very good for the compost. You can get all of this stuff. For green materials, you can use eggshells. Um, parts of fruit like a banana peel and even though it's brown manure is a great source it, but it has to come from herbivores like chickens cows and horses now if you're really interested in this compost and you turn it at least once a week in two months you should have your compost but if you decide you don't turn it at all it should take you about six months um, so 
when you get into your compost and you start and you mix it one day, there might be steam coming out of it. And that means that there's gonna that means that there's gonna be that the compost in the middle is starting to get ready. So you wanna get that compost that's starting that's getting hot and move it to the outside so the other can cook. Now another thing you don't want your compost to be too dry so what if your compost gets a little too dry you can add water or some greens and you always want your compost to be cut pretty damp and, but you don't want it to be too damp that'll just slow the process completely and if you ever feel like your compost is too wet it's always good to add some browns in there to soak up the compost. Now, the, the thing that makes this compost so great is that in each teaspoon, there's there are millions of microbes. And in one teaspoon, there are more living things in one teaspoon than there are people on Earth. And that's what makes it so good for plants. It has so much nutrition. Now, the way you can use your compost is once it's ready, you can put about an inch of, of the soil um, around the plants. You can also put some where, like when you're burying a plant, it would give it a pretty good start. So here's a mango seed, mango peeling, more mango peelings. So pretty much any fruit is a green and we actually discovered recently that we have bamboo growing in our yard and we found this one lying on the ground dead so we don't know if our dogs killed it or what but this won't go to waste nice to have these in little pieces so that things can compost faster Okay, now we've got all these watermelon rinds, so we're just going to dump them all in the compost. And an important step that we cannot skip, mix it up. Mm -hmm. 